guys, so today's video is going to be my yearly favorites. I'm so excited to film this video. I do it every year. Basically, I'm going to be sharing with you all my favorite makeup products from 2016, whether they launched this year or they're just things that I started using this year and I ended up loving them. I've been binge watching these videos. I just think it's so fun to see what people really love throughout the year. So this video is going to be a million years long, so I want to jump into it really quick. I'm not sitting at my desk because my desk is a mess, so I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> because why not? I wanted to mention I'm not going to be talking about any of my collabs in this video just because you've heard me talk about them a hundred times. They are my favorites and they were amazing experiences in 2016 so that alone was it was amazing. I just don't want to sit here and flood you with all of my collabs. So know that those are my favorites but I won't be talking about anything I collabed with. But yeah, let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my favorite eye products. The first one is probably no surprise to any of you. I mean... <laughs> None of these are gonna be a surprise to any of you, really. But the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Enigma has been my favorite primer ever. Last year, I spoke about the MAC Extended Eye Base, and that was like my ultimate for so long, but after I discovered this one, I kind of like this one more. I do think the MAC one is awesome, especially for ColourPop eyeshadows, because it helps them not transfer to like the top of your eyelid, but it doesn't really mask anything on your eyes. And this one in Enigma does everything I want it to. It primes my eyelids, but it also gives me a nice even canvas to work with. It completely covers all the veins and all the redness on my eyes and I love it for that. I never really loved any of the primer potions to be honest but this one in Enigma is awesome. For eyeshadow palettes I actually have two to share with you. This one is like in everyone's yearly favorites but for a great reason. It's amazing. This is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette. I have always liked Anastasia palettes but they've never blown me away. This one was one that really really blew me away. I have used this so much. I am so surprised I haven't hit pan on any of these. These are the eyeshadows I'm wearing on my eyes today. I love it. I'm only using this palette. I feel like you get a complete eye look. You don't need anything else. And usually I love palettes that have a black. I think every palette needs a matte black. But this Cypress Umber shade is such a dark brown that I'm okay with not having a black. These colors are so fun and so warm. And I feel like Anastasia kind of started a trend with this palette. After this palette released, I saw so many companies come out with these pinky toned eyeshadow palettes. I love the red shades, but I also love the really neutral shades in this palette because I get an everyday look with just these four shadows right here. They are soft eyeshadows, so they do have a little bit of kick up when you put your brush in, but I don't find them to have a lot of fallout. Honestly, this is one of the best eyeshadow palettes I have ever used. Definitely one of the most exciting launches of the year for me. I love this palette. And then the other eyeshadow palette I want to share with you guys is another favorite. This is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. It's full of so many natural and neutral shades that I feel like you can get so much use out of this. It's perfect for every single day. And when you look at it, it just looks like any other palette, but there's something so special about it. This shade specifically right here in Firecracker is such a beautiful all over the lid shade. This palette has it all. It has a great mirror. I love everything about this. It's a perfect traveling palette. You have everything you need. You need this palette. It's so good. I want to give a shout out to a single eyeshadow because out of all my single eyeshadows, I have used this one non-stop this year. This is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in the shade Waddles. I don't want to go into too much detail because I just recently talked about this in my ColourPop must-have video, but it's the most beautiful pinky brown. This color looks so beautiful in your crease, all over your entire lid. There's something about it. It has kind of like a satin finish. It looks matte, but there's like a hair of a sheen to it, which makes it so wearable, so easy to blend. I love this eyeshadow so much. I've used it so much this year. So for eyeliner, I really surprised myself this year because I'm usually a pen eyeliner girl, like my Jessie's Girl pen eyeliner, the Kat Von D one. I usually go for those kinds of eyeliners, but this year I really, really fell in love with the Inglot Gel Liner in the shade 77. It's just their matte black. It is so creamy. It just glides on your lid. You don't really have to tug too much at your eyes. It applies like a friggin' dream. It's so silky, so smooth, and it dries completely matte, which I prefer a very black matte liner. It's also very, very black, by the way. It's perfect. It's the perfect eyeliner. I know that some people have a problem with this because it transfers, but it doesn't transfer on me. Can you guys take a guess of what my favorite mascara was in 2016? This is the Kiko Extra Sculpt Volume Mascara. It's the mascara I'm wearing on my eyes right now. This is the best mascara I have ever, ever, 
ever used. I love it because it's pretty affordable. It's super volumizing. It does give you a lot of length, but it's mainly a volumizing mascara. I love how dramatic it is, and I don't think it clumps up as much as other volume mascaras can clump. The only thing I don't love about this mascara is that it dries out very quickly. I'll typically use this for about two and a half months and then I'll have to buy another one because it does dry out. So that's the only negative I have to say about this but besides that it does everything I want a mascara to do for me. So in terms of pencil eyeliners, I think the best ones are the ColourPop ones. They're so affordable, they're about six dollars or five. And they're amazing, especially their colored ones. They last forever on my waterline. They glide on so easily, they don't tug. They deposit so much color in one swipe that you don't feel the need to go over your waterline over and over again. I love these eyeliners. I'm pretty sure they released about a year ago, so I've, just, I've been using them all year. And then lastly for eyes, I wanna talk about the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Liners. These are glitter liners, but I don't really use them as eyeliner. I kind of use them as, as glitters. I'll mostly use them on my entire lid to kind of give a glittery effect to my eyeshadow. The ones I use the most have to be Midnight Cowboy, which is this gold one, and Glam Rock, which is the silver. But I also really love this one in ACDC because it's still a color, it's purple, but it's not like purple. I mean, they're all good, they're all so good. They just make applying glitter so easy because it comes in this sort of packaging and you just apply it like if it was eyeliner. You don't have to deal with any mess having glitter fall out of the packaging, there's no fallout on your face, and you don't need a glitter glue because it's like already in there, it's, you know? It's an all-in-one glitter. They also don't burn or sting my eyes. I have some from NYX that I love so much and they're so beautiful, but they do sting my eyes if I get a little bit too close. If I was using glitter in 2016, it was most likely these. So I don't really have any brow products to share with you guys in this video except one because I've been using the same brow products over and over again. I mean the Benefit ones released in 2016. The Precisely My Brow is one that I use all the time but I also like the new Anastasia one and there's just so many brands I love in terms of brow pencils that I really couldn't narrow it down. But the Mr. Brow Room by Givenchy is a game changer for me. This is their clear brow gel. I don't like the tinted one nearly as much as I like this one. It's Givenchy, so it's so pricey. There are a lot of high-end brands in this video, but I didn't want to mention products unless they were my true favorites. This is the best brow gel I've ever used. The only thing I don't like is that it kind of gets dirty because it's clear. You can see the product buildup on the inside. A little bit gross, but I look past that because it's so great for feathery brows. I love that trend where your brow hairs are kind of like bushy and all over the place. I love that. This brow gel keeps my hairs like stuck in place for the entire day, but they don't feel crispy at all. I don't know, it's kind of like your favorite hairspray that keeps a curl but doesn't make your hair hard. Yeah, that's the same way I feel about this brow gel. Okay, so let's discuss my favorite face products of 2016. I don't have a primer to share with you guys because I still use the one that I loved last year. The Too Faced Hangover RX is still my favorite primer, but I do have two foundations to share with you. The first one being the Hourglass Vanish Foundation Stick. Foundation sticks were all the rage in 2016. So many brands came out with their own version of a foundation stick and out of all of the ones I tried, the Hourglass one is the best. It's honestly one of the best foundations I've ever used in general. It's the foundation I'm wearing on my face right now. It's so natural, but it covers so much. It has full coverage, yet it's not drying at all. It's not cakey. It works really well with my dry skin. I would say it's more for dry skin, but I think even if you had oily skin, you would like this. I use the shades Bisque and Warm Ivory. I just mix them. A little bit does go a long way. I don't even swipe this on my face. I literally just pat it on my face, and then I go in with a brush and blend it in. Coverage is so beautiful, but it leaves your skin looking so natural. The other foundation I want to talk about isn't necessarily my favorite foundation of all time, but I've used it so much this year, and I just, I think it's so great. This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Long Wear Foundation. It says full coverage, matte finish, and oil free. Those things I never thought I would like. I'm someone who doesn't love a matte foundation, but this one doesn't emphasize my dry skin. I don't know, I know a lot of people with dry skin don't like this, but I love this. I've had a lot of skin issues within the past like five months. And I felt like the only foundation that really, really covered up all my bumpy skin, all my redness, all my breakouts was this. It makes your skin look flawless. I do feel like I'm wearing foundation when I wear this. Like I said, it's pretty intense. It lasts the entire day. Your skin stays looking flawless. And that's what I love about it because my bumps didn't really peek through after a couple of hours. It just stayed 
covered. It was definitely an awesome discovery in 2016 and really, really helped me when my skin wasn't looking the best. Okay, so I have two concealer favorites to share with you. The first one, I almost don't even wanna mention it because every single yearly favorites video I've seen, everyone has mentioned this. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I'm not gonna go on about it because I've talked your ear off at this point. This is the best concealer I have ever used. I know it's so overhyped and it was out of stock for a really long time, but trust me when I tell you that this is a product that is worth the hype a hundred percent. Every concealer I have, you need to set it with a powder. I mean, I always set this with a powder, don't get me wrong, but I feel like I don't need to. It does increase on me personally. There are so many times where I've walked out of the house and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to set my concealer because it just looks so good. It has amazing coverage, full coverage, yet it's so thin and liquidy that it blends out like perfectly. I always mix the shades light, medium, and fair, but recently you guys told me that Tarte came out with a bunch of new shades. I had no idea. I definitely need to go on the website and see if I can pick up a few shades. They're the best concealers of all time. I do have to give a shout out to this concealer right here because I have used it non-stop this year. Not so much on camera because this is my like no makeup makeup concealer. This is the Glossier Stretch Concealer and I'm in the shade light. I've spoken about it a few times on my channel, but I use this so much. It's a very dewy concealer which I know sounds like a turn off for a concealer, but I love that because it just makes my skin look so fresh and dewy. I love this underneath my eyes. I also like it on blemishes. It's an all around great concealer. It's so easy. I just open it, put my finger in there. Probably not the best, like not the most hygienic concealer, but I just rub my finger in there. I put it underneath my eyes. I put it on my pimples. I'll even apply some of it like throughout my face and then just blend it in with a beauty blender or a brush. I definitely have to set this. It's not like the shape tape. You have to set this because it is so emollient but it's so beautiful i had to give a shout out to it because it's like i love it the best powder discovery for me this year was the rcma no color powder this is hands down my favorite translucent powder i have a lot of powders that i really like as like powder foundations like the Giorgio armani one the luminous silk powder foundation is my favorite powder foundation in the world I sh totally should have included that today because I discovered that in 2016. But I wanted to narrow it down to one powder. Anyway, I personally don't get a white flashback when I take photos with this. It's the only powder I can bake my face with and not have it look cakey. A lot of you guys with dry skin can relate to this. Baking your face with powder if you have dry skin can go south really quick because it'll just emphasize all the dry skin but this one doesn't do that for me I could totally bake with this and it'll be okay it sets my concealer beautifully it'll even set my foundation beautifully I love this powder and it's so affordable the only thing that sucks is the freaking packaging RCMA please please can you can you put this in a different packaging friend to friend it's just a little difficult to use I was okay with it at first but the more I use it the more I wish it wasn't in like an oregano bottle you know what I'm saying Okay, so let's talk about bronzers, and I was so shocked that I couldn't narrow down my favorites. I have two bronzers and a contour powder to share with you. So this product is very pricey, but I feel like I hit a gold mine when I discovered this. This is the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in the shade Light. I have their original sculpting powder, which is in the shade Medium. It was the only shade they had, but then they released this one in Light, and wow, I love it when you first swatch this it looks so gray but it is the most natural the most beautiful contour powder ever last year in my yearly favorites video i was raving about the Too faced coco contour kit which don't get me wrong is still my favorite if i had to choose a contour kit the Too faced one is the best but for a specific contour powder as a single, nothing beats this in my opinion. I'm wearing this today, I took a brush and I just put this in the hollows of my cheeks. A little goes such a long way, if you use too much, it will look muddy. I never use this on its own, I always use a bronzer on top, but mm, I love this. For bronzer, I have two to share with you. The best bronzer I discovered in 2016 was the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I love this way more than I love my high-end bronzers. It's definitely top five overall. It smells like a tropical vacation. It smells exactly like pina coladas, but that's not why I love it. That's just a little reason. I have the shade bronzer. They have another one that's lighter that's called like light bronzer or something. I don't know. They definitely need to expand their range because this will bronze my skin, but it really won't bronze up 
like medium to deep skin tones. It's too light. So Physicians Formula needs to come out with a darker butter bronzer. That would be amazing. I love this because I feel like it's a two-in-one. I feel like it's a contour, but it's also a bronzer. It gives you a nice shadow on your face, but it also warms up the skin at the same time because it's not too cool. And it also has kind of like a very slight sheen. Very slight. It just looks so pretty. It's the bronzer I'm wearing all over my face. It's on my forehead. It's all over my face. It's such a great bronzer, and it's from the drugstore. So good. I love it. But I do want to mention the Too Faced Sweethearts bronzer in the shade Sweet Tea. Whenever I want a beautiful, glowy summer bronzer, I would always go for this. I used it nonstop when I first got it. I love that you get like two shades. They're both shimmery, but it makes your skin look so bronze, warm, and beautiful without looking orange. I hate very, very, very warm bronzers. And as you can see, this one isn't too warm. It's the perfect undertone, but the fact that it has a sheen to it makes it so stunning. I love it. Oh my god, no, I have one more bronzer. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I have one more bronzer but this is a liquid bronzer. This is the Cover FX Custom Enhancing Drops in the shade Sunkissed. This is the best liquid bronzer I have ever used. I love it way more than the NARS one, way more than that Do The Hula by Benefit that was like pure orange. Don't get me wrong, all of the Custom Enhancer Drops by Cover FX are amazing, but the bronzer is the thing that really stood out to me out of the entire collection, it's the most natural bronzer. It's a liquid, so it just sinks right into the skin, and it looks like your face is naturally bronzed like that. And the undertone is beautiful. It has a sheen to it, but very, very subtle, and it's not orange. It has kind of a neutral undertone. I cannot say enough good things about this. I'm obsessed with this product. So for blush, I actually have two favorites. I will say that the NARS blush in Madly is still my favorite. It's still my most used blush. But this year, I have discovered two that I love so, so much. The first one being the Sleek Blush in the shade Suede. When I first discovered this, it was the only blush I was putting on my face. It's the blush I'm wearing right now. I put very little of it, but it's the most beautiful peachy salmon nude blush. I love it so much. It has such a buttery texture and it looks stunning on the face, especially when I have a self tan going on. I love it in the summer. I love it in the spring. It's a really great affordable blush. I love it. I love it. And then Tarte added more shades to their Amazonian Clay Blush line, which you guys have no idea how excited I was to see Tarte expand that color range because since I'm someone who likes more subtle blushes, more natural blushes, I felt like their Amazonian Clay line was very bright, very pinky, and they expanded their line with more neutral colors. And oh my gosh, I'm so happy they did. Photo. And my favorite one, hands down, is Sensual. It's a very neutral blush. It looks like nothing in the pan. It's just a typical nude blush. But it's such an essential because it pairs with every single makeup look. It's just a nude blush that I feel everybody needs in their collection. Okay, so I want to talk about highlights right now. And I really, really, really narrowed it down. And I have so many highlights that I love. But this year, discovering these two, it was exciting. First one being the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is like a $3 highlight. I bought it at Ulta and I'm so happy I did. This is definitely not a typical highlight. It's not one of those like really intense, beaming, glowing highlights. This one is very, very natural. But on a day-to-day -day basis, to be honest, I prefer a highlight like this. It looks like a face powder in the pan, but when you apply it to your face with a brush, it just comes alive. It gives you a natural glow, but you can still see the glow. It's like a, a glow from within. I'm wearing this highlight on my entire face today. Like, I'm not even kidding. I took a big brush and I put it on my forehead. I put it on my cheeks, on my nose, on my chin. I put this everywhere because I felt like my face was a little bit too matte today. So stunning. One of the best highlights I've ever discovered. One of my favorite things I've ever discovered and it's so affordable. A lot of people tell me like, oh, Essence, that's so cheap. But don't knock it till you try it. It's so good. Do not judge a makeup product by its price tag, okay? And then the other highlight I want to talk about is the Jouer Powder Highlight in the shade Citrine. This is the highlight I'm wearing on my face right now, like right at the tops of my cheekbones. The only thing that totally sucks about these highlights is that they are incredibly fragile. I've heard so many people talk about how theirs have shattered, and I feel like my Citrine is on the verge of shattering. Every time I open it, like more chunks fall out. It's really weird. It's so fragile. I'm really worried this is gonna like crumble up any day now. I have traveled with it in the past and it hasn't broken, but now I'm really afraid to travel with it again because it's breaky. This formula is so weird. Like when you touch it, it almost feels wet to the touch. Look at that. It's incredible. It's so glowy. This is definitely one of those highlights that it's like, wow, 
that's a highlight. But in the most stunning way possible. It's not chunky, it's not glittery, it's just a true sheen to the skin. I actually took this with me to California and my friend Gabby did my makeup for a photo shoot and she was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna buy this highlight because it's so amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. They came out with two other shades, but honestly, I don't even touch those because I'm just so addicted to this one. I feel like if I sat here and talked about all my favorite lippies of this year, this video would be 50 minutes long. So I'm just narrowing it down to a few. Now, I wear my collabs like almost every day if I'm honest if I'm not filming I'm wearing point zero or I'm wearing Aquarius or Miami fever or one of those colors but when I'm not wearing those I'm wearing these and I cannot find my Tuscany liquid lipstick by Ofra anywhere I know that that one is like really new to my collection but honestly it's like the most stunning liquid lipstick I have ever discovered and of course I lost it my favorite liquid lipstick at the moment totally lost it but the Ofra liquid lipsticks will forever be, in my opinion, my favorite liquid lipsticks. Total favorites. I still love liquid lipsticks. It's what I prefer wearing. And this one is actually by Anastasia. This is definitely a favorite discovery of mine in 2016. This is the Ashton liquid lipstick. I love this. It's like a nude mixed with a brown, but it has that really beautiful warm undertone. I don't know. I love it. It's definitely my favorite Anastasia liquid lipstick that they've ever come out with. This lipstick has lived in my purse since I got it. I don't think I've ever spoken about it on my channel. This is the Amazonian Butter Lipstick by Tarte and this is in the shade Park Ave Princess. This is the only one I love out of that whole line. It is the most beautiful glossy nude ever. I love it because it's a lipstick but it has such an intense buttery sheen. Since I got it in the mail, I just threw it in my purse because I knew, I just knew. It's amazing, like I said, it does not leave my purse, ever. Definitely one of my most worn lipsticks. The Buxom White Russian Lip Gloss will forever be my favorite lip gloss. It's the best, I've mentioned it time and time again, I think I even spoke about it last year, but the ColourPop Lip Gloss in the shade Fairy Floss is awesome. It's so beautiful, it's definitely my favorite ColourPop gloss. It reminds me a lot of White Russian, but it's a little bit less milky. It doesn't last as long as my Buxom one, but it's such a pretty just throw in your purse kind of lip gloss, and I've used this non-stop since it released. And then I have two lip liners I wanna share with you. One is more so a formula, even though I love this color. These are the MAC Pro Longwear Lip Pencils. They last forever. I wore this specific color on Christmas Eve. This is He Said, She Said. The most beautiful red lip liner I have ever come across, by the way. So beautiful, I love this color. I wore this lip liner on Christmas Eve and it lasted the entire day and I ate a lot of food, a lot. And I drank a lot of wine. A lot. And it went nowhere because the prolonged wear lip liners stay until you take them off. But I wanted to mention the Rimmel Exaggerate Full Color Lip Liner in Natural. I don't think I discovered it this year, but I wore it nonstop this year. This is what I'm wearing on my lips today, this lip liner. That's the only thing I'm wearing on my lips today. I love this lip liner because it's so easy to overdraw your lips. I have a pretty small top lip. Not that I'm ashamed of it or anything. I don't plan on enhancing it at all. But it's nice when you can use a lip liner to make your lips look a little bit poutier. I love how creamy it is, how natural looking it is. It looks so beautiful under so many nude lipsticks. Oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about this. Oh, I completely forgot to mention this in my highlighter section. Okay, so the NARS Hot Sand Highlight is one of my favorite highlights in the entire world. I love it so much. I didn't think I would because I don't really like NARS highlights, but this one in Hot Sand is amazing. It was limited edition, but I think they brought it back for a limited time. I just checked the Sephora website and it's still available. It's in a little duo with Laguna. It's a really pretty pinky sheen. It looks so natural on the tops of your cheekbones, but it looks so beautiful. I have like 10 backups. When I found out it was limited edition, I bought like five of these. I wish I was kidding. <laughs> I wanna give a shout out to these falsies right here. These are my favorite falsies ever. I don't really talk about falsies that much because I don't use them that much, but I have been loving these ever since I discovered them. I was gonna wear them today, but these are my last pair and I wanted to show you what they look like in the box. I have to go to Walgreens and get like a ton of these. It's from the brand Kiss, which I never thought that Kiss would make such beautiful falsies, but they really do, especially these in the shade Camellias. It's my favorite. They have that multi-angle effect to make them look really natural. They're very thin. They don't have that thick band that's like hard to glue down. They're amazing. I have a hair care product that really stood out in 2016. The Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black Dry Shampoo. I've spoken about this a million times, but ever since discovering this dry shampoo, I hate every other dry shampoo I use. Oh, there were so many I loved, but once I discovered this, I was like, where 
You've been all my life. The most oil absorbing dry shampoo ever. It literally makes your hair look like you just washed it. And also, it smells like the Nirvana Black perfume, so it makes your hair smell good, even if you haven't washed it in a few days. I don't know if I spoke about this in my last year's yearly favorite, but the Loving Tan Deluxe Bronzing Mousse in Ultra Dark is the best self-tanner in the world. So whenever I want my skin to look a little bit more deep and not so veiny, I will apply this and it just gives me the most beautiful tan ever. I love that it doesn't smell really strong. You look tan, but you don't look orange. It has the perfect undertone. I love this so much. And then I wanted to mention my perfume favorite of 2016, which I thought would be really hard to choose because I am a perfume hoarder. Oh, you have no idea. I am a perfume hoarder and they go bad, but I hoard them. And this one is actually my second bottle, and I bought it this year. This is my second bottle. This is the Valentino Donna perfume. You guys know that I do this thing where every time I travel to a new place, I buy a perfume and I wear it the entire time that I'm there, and then I won't wear it for a few weeks so that when I smell it again, it reminds me of that vacation and it takes me right back to that place. And I bought the Valentino Donna perfume to take with me the first time I went to Vegas, and it's the only perfume that I used in Vegas, and I was there for a whole week. And then every time I smelled it after that it took me right back to Vegas. I love Vegas. Not because it's like, oh, party Vegas, but because I don't know how to explain it. I think it's a beautiful place. I've been through an entire bottle. I use it all the time now because it will forever remind me of Vegas. No matter what I do, it it just reminds me of Vegas. But anyway, it's a beautiful scent besides that. And I have a lot of favorites, but this one is just so unique. Every time I wear this, I get stopped and asked, like, what perfume are you wearing? It lasts a long time on my skin and it just smells delicious. So I had to mention this. It's definitely my favorite perfume discovery in 2016. Plus, hello, look at this bottle. How beautiful is this? I have the hair mist right here. I'm obsessed with this. Definitely check this out. I think it's a Nordstrom exclusive because that's where I bought it. So yeah, guys, that completes my 2016 beauty favorites. This video was a million years long, but I hope you found it enjoyable, and I hope you try out some of these products and let me know if they work out for you as well as they worked out for me. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what your favorite product in 2016 was. What was your favorite makeup discovery? I would love to know. So yeah, that completes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Me, Patricia. <laughs> Which I know is a little bit of a turn. Am I if I fell asleep? <laughs> this clip, this brow gel, cute. Wait, 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 wait. Relax, relax. Please, please, I'm filming. You're gonna break things. Oh, look at Connie. No, no, don't lick my pimple. Do not lick Patricia. I can't answer the phone right now. I'm filming a video. I've heard so many tickle. Or Miami. <laughs>